Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Houston Northwest Chamber of Commerce Back to Business series. Um, this is our program where we intend to inform and educate our members on all things that help uh, improve and make you a better small business owner. Um, so, and today we have our regular host for this event, Beth Guide. Beth Guide, uh, and most of you already know Beth, but if you don't, I'm going to read her bio. Beth Guide is the president and CEO of ACTWD, a full service web hosting and design company, which is also the parent to her internet company, her internet marketing company, SEO 411. Her company serves over 10,000 customers. Beth has been a pioneer in SEO component of internet marketing ever since Yahoo was the predominant search engine. And today, Beth and her companies are among the nation's best in web design, SEO, and internet marketing. Beth is often the Fox News technology expert. She enjoys sharing her knowledge with other entrepreneurs, giving them tips and strategies from her years of experience that allow them to ask the right questions when seeking help with their web presence and marketing. So here to talk to you today about ramping your marketing back up in a post-COVID environment, Beth Guide, take it away. Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, Bobby did a good job on the inter introduction for me. So today I wanna to talk about marketing and kind of how it's changed and what it should mean to us, especially post COVID, because there is an entire component now um, of every customer base out there that is, um, has mutated into how we do business, which means that we have to start to adapt to the way our customers wanna do business with us versus the way we may have done it historically. So when you're talking about marketing, we need to do um, quite a few things here to make sure that our people start to um, feel good, that they have confidence in us and that they know uh, that we're looking out for them and that we care about their health, their safety, but also how our business has adapted and modeled in. And the question always becomes then, how do we tell somebody about all of that and how we package that? So the very first thing that we need to do is make sure that we, um, I'm gonna say, I'm hoping that everybody here has a Google My Business account. Um, if you don't, you need to get one. Um, and we do classes and uh, actually, as I'm saying this in July, when I do the class for this for this chamber on the first, uh, first Wednesday, uh, we'll do how to work Google My Business. Um, but that component that Google sets forth has an entire, area for you to set forth what your COVID policies are, whether you're open, what your staff does, what your expectations are, um, and how you intend to deal with uh, post-COVID business being open. Um, some people have not returned their office hours yet. Some have been Zoom only. Some allow a by appointment only. Um, and Google has gone out of their way to add COVID policies to the Google My Business platform. Um, and everybody needs to make sure that you have a COVID policy, that you have gone to Google and that you have updated that policy. And I know that for, for here, um, it kind of seemed like we just said, oh, everybody go back to work. It kind of, at least it kind of feels that way on some level. Um, so, I think we still need to be um, vigilant in our messaging to the end user to make sure. And if you notice some of the bigger brands out there, they are still um, enforcing and embracing this. And I think that as small business owners, we kind of need to follow that just a little bit and go ahead and do that through the Google My Business platform. And I think that's a that's a very important thing. So. Um, if you go to, and let me see, I actually can probably show you where it is. So if you just give me a minute to kind of close some windows out for me um, and open it, I will show you exactly where it is. And I can screen share, right, Scott? It'll do it. Yeah, it did it. There it goes. Yeah, you should be able to. I did it. I got it. Moving you all to my other window so I can see you. Okay. Um, 
Okay. So when you come in, your Google My Business is uh, google.com forward slash business, and you can just simply sign in. Let's see. Let's see. Okay. And if you notice that I go, I can go to my account. I can click on it. And there is an entire service availability business hours and put any COVID updates you have. So um, make sure you have an answer. It'll say, is your business open? You say, yes. Are you offering on-site services? Yes. Do you have online appointments? The answer is yes. What I'm going to say is that everybody needs to have an online appointment policy at this point. Um, and, and part of the reason why is because although you wouldn't think that is marketing, the fact that you're offering more suggestions to people um, or more ways to do business with you or making it easy to do business with you, um, I think is an important thing. So if you don't have an online um, ability to do business with you, I would surely make sure that you went ahead and, and got that piece integrated so that you could say, yes, you do have it. If you have any business hour changes, and hold on a minute, my screen is loading here. You can go in and you can give it your COVID business hours per se, and you can add secondary uh, ones. So we got that one. Yeah, good job. Okay, so you also can add any supplemental hours. Um, and then if you look down here and you come down, oh, they moved it. They moved it back up to the next screen. Um, the next thing that we can do is that we can post any of our COVID updates or any policies that we have. There is a um, situation right here that you can go in and they actually have it as a create a post topic. And what you may choose to do is um, say, hey, we've resumed office hours. We're Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Our staff does or does not wear masks, whatever your uh, policy is we are or are not vaccinated, whatever your policy is, whatever you feel that you want to set for a tone and a tenor. Um, and then what ends up happening is it will appear here when you update, when you update your, when somebody comes to your company. So if they're looking for me, let's see what they see. They need a long one. Okay, so when you come here, it will list your policies and health and safety. You see that you're required, we disinfect, we have, they put all those policies here so that people can quickly see what your opinions are and how you handle it. And then the other thing that you have is these boxes here that you can list and update however you handle it. So me, I'm putting our internet clinic places here, but you also may choose to go ahead and put a, a, an update and put your COVID information here and keep it. So here's an urgent care, just to give you a, just to show you another one. Because this is an actual medical facility, They've, they've actually given some of the, all right, so on this, it actually gives you the COVID info for the company. It tells you whether we have online assistance. So it's giving you all of this. And then if you make a COVID update assistance here, they actually post it there for you to see. So uh, these are opportunities. So here's the problem, or here's the thing that Google's gone on to do since we've all been in um, quarantine. Um, Google has added situations to this placard here that your business is less likely to show up without this box here. So you want this box because to be the most effective area it can be because a lot of customers never leave this. They stay, they use this box here. They may call you, they may not call you. They do whatever they need to do and they do it off this interface here. So you wanna make sure that you have the most robust 
information for your end user, um, regardless of what those policies are, this would be the place and the way to do it. So I, I would think that would be one of the most important ways um, that you can communicate that. It's not something we had to do. Um, the other suggestion I would be, I would say is learn to adapt your business to your customers. I mean, of course, if you're a restaurant, you're not going to be able to do virtual eating, but um, you also could do something as simple as saying, hey, um, our staff still wears masks, so come on in, we're, we're happy to have you. So just understand um, that uh, that this element plays a big, a big part of it. And I encourage everybody to have a safety statement and explaining what you're doing. Um, the other thing that I would do, and I, I don't want to focus too much on COVID, but I, I, on some level, but unfortunately, I'm going to have to hear a little bit. Um, so um, the other thing that I would do, and I'm going to show you this one because I, this one actually has it. So you see, I have a COVID info, learn more. And when you go to learn more, it comes up with what, where are we in our current cycle of information for uh, information for COVID. So if I'm a travel agency, I need to have rules and regulations for COVID stuff. If I'm an urgent care, I need to have a rules and regulations for it. If I am a marketing company, I need to say, I need to have a page on my website that says, this is how this business handles um, this scenario that we put on. So uh, making your customers feel comfortable to do business with you is imperative. Um, it is very important. Um, I will also say this, and I, and, and you know, hindsight's always 20, 20 per se, but I hope that some of you guys have started working with building uh, credibility and building your presence and how people interact with you during your downtime. So what I mean is that Google is looking for you to be experts. The more of an expert you are, the more comfortable your customers feel with doing business for you. And then the question becomes, how would you convey that you are an expert, okay? And this little button here that is labeled blog is probably one of the most important ways to be able to convey this to your end user because you can come in and start putting up information about your business and how you do business and what you do with that business. You can come in and start to put that information up. So if I look down this, we, we did a page here that says, what is the difference between the, cold, uh, the flu vaccine and a, and a COVID vaccine? What do you need to know? And we actually put a page up for patients so that they understood what was the difference, what was the efficacy, what was, where are we at with vaccine, the flu vaccine versus the COVID vaccine and why are they different? Why are they the same? So that customers understand. But this starts to set us apart that people understand what we're doing and what we're not doing. Um, what I will say is that for myself, I have, I actually have used um, our Zoom classes as a way to um, not only keep in touch with the people that I had before, which again, it's easier when you're doing, you know, now we're looking at things with hindsight. So, but if you have these assets and things have happened, we need to go ahead and use them. So what I mean when I say that is that for the last year, we have all been stuck in Zoom meetings. And in fact, we're still in Zoom meetings a lot of the ways. And I just told you Zoom meetings aren't going away. Okay, so much to everybody's thing, we're all still in Zoom meetings. But what I did with those Zoom meetings is I used them as an opportunity to create content for my company. Okay, so if I sat down and I did a training session with one of my staff, we went ahead and used Zoom um, and then recorded that. So I have that recording. I have the way I did that. And I am now going to go take that and I'm going to put that out on my website as a way to explain how people can do their job. So the question becomes, did you keep an archive of the videos that you have? or that were made during this time? And is there points in time that with a small amount of editing, we can take those videos and make them into something that helps us become an expert? Because that need to become an expert is a, is a driver for internet success, okay? So if I'm just gonna talk about how to be successful 
on the internet. I'm going to say I need to be an expert. How am I going to be I'm an expert? Well, the second I start to take the material that I have and put it up, Google considers it to be more successful. So if you come back over here, I have a few different ways that I went ahead and did this. So this, I hope, gives everybody some ideas on how to, how to work on this. So first of all, I've had my longstanding SEO class here with the chamber, um, and we've had them a few other places. So what I have done is I've taped every single one of them. And every single one that I, I, I tape, I go ahead and turn, and I say tape, but record. Um, I guess every once in a while it gives you my age. But um, I go ahead and record each and every one of these. And then I go ahead and I talk about what is my subject, what are we doing? Where are we going? Um, and I take it, I put it up with a brief explanation. I also put the video out on YouTube. So the video would be here. If I click the button, it would play. It, it explains the video that matches this. They all start to work together. And then the last thing I did is I turned around and made a podcast out of it. And in doing that, I have created three different ways for end users to interact with me and it all started from something that I did not have to, I'm going to use the word plan, but I don't know that I necessarily mean I didn't have to plan it. Um, I, I didn't have to go, I didn't have to go get a film crew. I didn't have to go get a sound crew. I didn't have to, it, it really is nothing more than $14 a month out of my pocket for my Zoom account. Um, and a little bit of know-how on how to use um, a bit of video editing software, which some of them are are, are fairly easy to use. And because they're fairly easy to use, um, I think mostly anybody can handle it with a little bit of looking around. So we went ahead and we took every piece of content that we have created or that we had inadvertently created and have now come back and learned how to utilize them. And where that comes back to your marketing is, I am taking something that I did, I am repurposing it in the package to make myself be an expert. And the thing is, is that marketing and sales are hard in the 2021 because you have to break down the barriers. Our, fit, our sales funnels, a lot of ways have been disrupted. Um, some people are out of business, so that's a disruption. Um, some of them, our contacts are no longer there because we had a group of contacts and then they went away. Um, so we have multiple different things. So the only thing that we can control is ourselves. And because we can only control ourselves, the best thing we can do is take the items we have. So I'm hoping some of you had kept your recordings. I have a whole Dropbox full of every class that I've ever done and any customer one-on-one, -on -one, I've kept them because as I sit and I talk through and I explain problems, I can actually cut the customer out at times and just use my explanation and make a show out of it. Um, so when you come here, so you see, I have all my blog posts. I have them all in here. Here's my little schedule. Here's our logo for what we do each month. You see, we have our class for the month. Um, but then the other thing I do is I have a classes tab and the classes tab has all our Zoom information. So if you wanted to give a talk, let's say you wanted to do a webinar and we're gonna come up to webinars here in just a second. Um, let's say you wanted to do something like that. Well, I've kept, where's the Zoom links for each one? I've put them all here. But the other thing I did is I went and I started a YouTube channel for all of these. And I have added each and every one of them. I went ahead and added uh, 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 to my uh, Zoom channel. When I started this, I had two videos. So I took these sessions and went and put them on the internet. And everybody should be doing that. And, and so like this talk, I hope the chamber takes it and puts it on their YouTube channel. I hope that they add it that way so that these can be memorialized, but it gives the chamber the leg up to be an expert or to present themselves as an expert because we have this interaction. As far as you all go independently, and there, there, there's actually quite a few more of these. So they're, they're just displaying them however they want at the moment. But um, I made a centralized place for each and every one of them. And then last but not least, even the podcast has its own little home so that as people want to engage in it, 
here it is, here's what we have, here's all the tracks, here's the ones you can see, which ones are somewhat more important or more popular than others. You can have the links to subscribe, you have everything you need to have, here you go. Um, and <clears throat> excuse me, the good news on this is that as we add to it, these things go out and any potential and possible customers become almost immediately they can start to go through and then they can see how we run our business, whether we're an expert, how knowledgeable we are about something. It's a way for each and every one of you to interact with that. Now, if you are an accountant, you need to have a, an accountant tax tip blog. If you're a real estate agent, you need to have a discussion in a class about real estate. I mentioned webinars and what we've done with that is, and I, and I kind of have done this ad hoc because I don't want to cost anybody a lot of money. And so we've taken the Zoom accounts, we've sent out the uh, webinar link, we've recorded each and every one of them, and we've made sure that we've picked topics that are relevant. And then we take those uh, segments, we take them and put them on our website and then take them and put them out throughout social media. Webinars are still going to be important. There's still going to be something that you need to do today to be able to move your business forward. And I know these all maybe sound like scary words or how am I going to do this? But the reality is this got super, super easy to me the second, um, and I shouldn't even say to me, this got super easy to, or should be super easy to everybody the second that they learned how to use a Zoom account, because you have an immediate way to record your messaging and you don't have to be a cameraman. You don't have to be all of this. So you can do your webinar. You don't, even if you get one person or you log another computer in, it doesn't matter. It gives you that platform to sit down and have that discussion. Um, I will say years ago, I, these guys asked me, to do a video on uh, why a chamber membership was important. And they've used it and probably needs to be updated a little bit because I'm sure we have people that were not around anymore. Um, but, the, but the thing is when we do these, um, that 20 minute little talk kind of is a webinar. It's a little uh, thing on, I can put it together and say, hey, look, this is why you need to have your chamber membership. This is what you need to do. So it becomes a, a piece of content that can be syndicated repeatedly and reused by this organization to help propel their engagement, to make them an expert, to help in their sales process. It's basically using technology to help develop better, um, better ways um, to make things work out. And I think that we all need to consider how's the best way to handle that and what works for our business. I don't know what everybody does in the room. Um, and if you guys want to kind of put it in the scroll, that's probably a good, good thing. Cause I could, I can kind of tell you what you, where you need to go or what you need to do with it. Um, but I think that what ends up happening is we end up with a circumstance that if we think of the out of the box a little bit, and we become our own fan club, which is usually hard. The younger guys, they, they don't have a problem doing it, but the older folks were taught to be humble and not to be self-aggrandizing and all of that, that. You need to do that and you need to stake that in the ground so that when somebody comes and they visit you and they look at you and they, they see your website and they hear you speak, that they know that you are the best person for the job. And this is a unique opportunity because it drug all of us 10 years into the future, we would have got where we are now, we would have got there, but we weren't there yet. It, it just like literally like a light switch it pulled us all there. So what we need to do from a marketing standpoint is we need to make sure that we are, if we have content that we take, we put it out there. We put it on our website, we develop YouTube. If we didn't do it, we need to take our Zoom accounts and we need to start thinking about how can we put content or create content simply by talking to your computer screen. I think there's also that other psychological thing that there for a while, it was difficult to talk to a computer screen because you didn't get that feedback, but now it's kind of gotten to where it's pretty much easy. You don't feel dumb anymore talking to your computer in your house. 
uh, while you're sitting in an empty house and having a conversation. There is a certain level of comfort that we've all now um, began to have, or we have, I mean, that we've, that we've taken in. So the good news is that we have the tools, the tools are easy to use, um, and that once you start to get in the habit of it, it's going to automatically start to help raise all boats. So, so, so far, we want to make sure we have our Google up to date. We want to make sure we have a COVID statement on our website on how we do business. And we want to make sure that we're having a robust set of videos and interaction, um, not only for customers to currently participate in, but to be able to create content easily for the website. Um, end users are becoming far more sophisticated with what need what they anticipate to be a business have available they expect you to have videos and uh, talks and all sorts of information no matter what whether you're an engineering firm whether you're an accountant they don't care there is a certain expectation um, the other thing is that in order to reach and get your messaging out there, you're, you're at about 23 to 25 times. Now I used to say three, now we're up to about 25, but we are on information overload. So you need to start putting yourself out there and giving people reasons to remember you so that you can have them come back more frequently earlier in that process. Um, if you're putting out weekly webinars on how to do taxes or what is the you know, um, most up-to-date tax laws or PPP loans or forgiveness plans or all this stuff that we're all now being inundated with. Um, I think that you start to become, hey, wait, I know this person's gonna have X, Y, and Z over there. Let me go try over and see if they've already put up something on this. So you start to make yourself more credible. Now, if you're a brick and mortar and you have, have people you need to you need to approach that a little bit differently and again not knowing who is in the room does make that just a little bit harder for me um but you need to to be out there um and explaining to people from a brick and mortar place not only that it's okay to come visit the steps that you're taking we're gonna we're gonna assure you we limit crowds all the all the stuff that we've grown accustomed in our language um and then we need to make sure that we're, we're using, utilizing our properties, meaning like our virtual properties to be able to help uh, push that messaging out. So that's another, another piece of this that's a, that's a problem or a, a solution. Um, and other, other parts of our marketing, um, I think that um, we need to make sure that even if we don't take me up on my offer to include video that we do um, look and work towards how do we make sure that we're putting up the most up-to-date relevant content about our business because here's the other thing that's going to happen or that is happening the internet has a very long memory and we don't know who's actually still in business who's not in business, are they still out there? Are they still not? Because if you don't act like you're still in business, nobody knows whether you actually are or not. So it's gonna become a, a game to see who's up to date, who's added something. How do I transmit out there that, hey, we're still here. We're still alive. We, we made it through to the other side. We're flourishing, whatever's happening in your world. We need to make sure that we are having frequent updates to our Google areas, to our blog posts um, with relevant up-to-date content that has happened since last year. So if there's stuff that's happened to you this year, make sure you're putting it out there. Um, if you're um, out there and you have anything like that you can do a press release on, put a press release out there. Put some news out there do some things to let people know that you're okay and that you made it. Um, because I think that we're going to end up with a whole big situation where I'm going to go somewhere and I'm going to figure out that business is actually out of business because you, you see it all over the place. Now you see shopping centers and strip malls and who's here and who's not and who decided to retire and who said this was too much. And here we, here we all go. So 
make sure that people know you're there and that you're vibrant and that you're okay and that you still have a staff and that you feature people and that they can go there and that they know that there's friendly faces there. If you've kept um, your same people, let people know that you made that attempt to do that. That's, that's a big, that's a big deal. Um, I can't tell you how many people have gone places only to find that the person that they were familiar with is not there anymore, that either they were let go and they haven't come back or their position was filled and, or we filled it with two and figured out we don't need the position. So take those people in your organization that are, that do have that, I'm going to use the word rock star element to it, but it, that you have that with and make sure you're featuring them and make sure that you know that they're still there and reach out to people. Um, and if you don't, then you're going to run into a case where people may get confused whether you're still actually even alive and viable or what's even happening because they don't really know what you're doing. Um, so communication becomes a very important piece of this for you to communicate with your end users. Um, the other thing is, is like what I've noticed, and I think that this comes to, that we're going to see this more in September, if not now, is that I think by September, we're going to have more and more businesses once school goes back into session and it is really in session, maybe. Um, the school of thought seems to be that workforces are going to call themselves, call people back into work full time. And when that happens, if that's you, let people know, send out something to the, to the, so like I said, do a press release, send out and let people know that you're open, you're back in business, that you're, so people understand what you're doing, how you're doing it. And if you've decided to stay hybrid, it's okay to say that too. You just have to say that in a better way, which is, hey, um, we're still here. We've just changed. We now have this uh, diversified workforce that we're gonna we're gonna do to handle it this way. It's for your benefit. That so you just have to kind of put some spin on it and polish up your message to make sure it's relevant to your exact your exact customer base. So there's a lot of different things that you guys need to do to let customers know it's okay to do business with you and that you're in good shape. Um, the other thing that I'm seeing a lot of in marketing, and I think this is a pretty good idea, is that if you had services that you had to prepay, that you had to cancel, that you had to refund, like trips, uh, cruises, uh, something like that, um, even weddings and... Um, you know, event venues and things along those lines. If you have some kind of a guarantee to make sure that somebody's not going to be on the hook, if they book with you now, you need to kind of put that out there. You need to tell people, hey, you know, we have this, something that we didn't do before we're doing now, we're offering you a flexibility. Um, we may be offering a ability to, but your marketing message needs to be out there like that. So let's say, um, you know, let's take an event venue or a wedding or something, you know, some kind of place like that. If you require 50% down, you know, you need to have some, maybe some kind of plan that says, hey, if you cancel within this many days of the event because of some circumstance um, or illness, we'll go ahead and refund your money. Um, I, I would say that it's wise to start putting those plans in place and letting your customers know that you are willing to be flexible because you understand that they can't control everything um, and that you don't wanna put them at risk. So you're handling things in a way that helps support them. So that's a, that's a procedural thing, what it would sound like, but it's also a marketing thing because it's a, it's a way to convey um, flexibility, if you will, to your end user. So your end user knows that you're committed to them and that you're not just going to say, hey, you gave me 20000 for a wedding. I'm sorry, you're, you all have COVID and, and or granny can't come or whatever you want. So you know what? We're just going to keep your 20000 You just have a nice life. And I mean, there are there are people out there that are that are doing that, that things were not previously refundable. I think we all need to rethink our refund policy, especially when it comes to being able to turn a business on a dime like that. Um and I think that's all in, in messaging and marketing and in our brand and how, how user-friendly we want to be in that brand. And I think that becomes very important policies and procedures that um, we need, that everybody needs to put in place so that people know that um, 
this is what we need to do. So that's a whole nother aspect of that. So you just make sure that you're taking care of your customers, that your customers know that you are on their side. And I know that sounds like a funny little thing to say, but at the end of the day, I think that uh, it's very important to have those policies in place because it just conveys a commitment to quality and to honesty and integrity and you know, I think people are looking for that because they're they're afraid. I mean, who's going to go and plan a wedding at this point? They're they're scared that you know, in six months we may all be back in our houses or something. I you know, I mean, I understand that that probably that won't happen, but I do think there's a certain percentage of the population that would be concerned about a large ticket purchase without any type of flexibility guarantee. So if that applies to you, please go ahead and start thinking your way through it because I think it's something that you need to do. So um, with all of that said, um, I wanna always, everybody wants to always ask me questions. I don't know if, if everybody's here that they can ask questions or not. So um, I don't know whether we have people that wanna ask questions or not. Did you, you did want me to take questions, right? Yes. Guys? Yeah, okay. please. So uh, if you have questions for Beth, go ahead. You can just unmute yourself and ask, or you can type it into the chat. Either way, well, it's fine. It's fine by me. Uh, David Vaughn has no, uh, whatchamacallit, so we have that. Uh, he's got no audio so, or uh, ability to speak, so he just needs to type that in the chat box. Yes, ma'am, can I, I, can I yes, do please. something for you? Yes, Ms. Beth, just a quick question. Um, I know right after you, uh, first of all, thank you so much, great information. And um, I know once somebody is very familiar with a platform or the different platforms and, um, and uh, you know, and now of course it depends on what kind of business you have, but what is your recommendation and the time that you have to invest on the, you know, updating everything? Is that like every day you spend a specific time checking on, you know, all the different uh, changes that you have to make once a week will be a still a good uh, time frame or or I mean I know it depends on the on the business but what will be your recommendation on that? Well, it it does depend on the business. I mean, if you're um, if you're an accountant and nothing's changed in the last week, I'm, I'm just put try to get something up. I ideally, I'd love to have everybody post something two times a week, but I think that's somewhat ambitious. Um, and I think a lot of people can't meet that. But if you do nothing and you move it to once a month, you're winning just simply because you did nothing before and now you're doing something once a month. If you did something once a month, let's move it to twice a month and so on up the pipe. Um, the more you publish this stuff or this information, these videos, and you put that out, the more likely you are that Google's going to put you in a more favorable place on their within their search that makes you more available to end users. And I think that's a very important thing, if you will, um, because that trust factor and that ability to um, interact with your business, they're looking for trustworthy people now. They are actually in their algorithm. They're actually looking for a trust factor. And then the question becomes, how do you make trust? Well, joining a chamber of commerce is one of those things that makes trust. So just understand that's one of them. But the but the other thing that makes trust is communicating, putting information up that people will understand what you're saying and they know what you're doing and um, all those type of things. So the more you do, the better you are. But if you're asking me what the floor would be, if you're doing nothing, once a month is good. If you're doing something try to go with once a week. I, ideally, I'd like to see everybody at once, not two times a week. But if you could get you just do something once a week, you'd be okay. If you plan once a week and only do once a month, you're still probably way better than you would be if you did nothing a month. All right, so that that would answer that. So is that, is that, I like that. that answer that what you answer. did? Yeah, yes, thank you. I really like that. And I definitely like that. Make sure that people know that you are there that you're still there. Thank you. I think that's the biggest thing you got to make sure because people don't know. You don't know when you go somewhere when that place is still actually even open. I kind of ride down the street and I'm like, wait, they closed too? And I'm like, you don't, you don't even, I've got one in my parking lot out here that they're closed. I would have never thought in a million years that they would have been a place to close down, but boy, oh, they're closed. They're gone. Empty building sitting on the side of I-10. So 
that's you know that's a that's a big deal and their location actually isn't marked as closed so you you would never really know and we're going to see more and more of that that people just left and didn't tell anybody so any other questions that we may have yeah i have one real quick um so i've been in the process of trying to get our social media accounts verified um like i just got the twitter account verified um, does that help the Google trust factor? Does Google pick up on that or do they not? No, they know, they know that they're coming from them and they're coming out of verified accounts. Okay. Um, they, they would, that, that does help with that. Now, the thing is you need to actually use them and then that'll actually send the signals back as well. And if you notice, I plugged those into my homepage and I would like to see you take those sweet those tweets and plug them into your homepage. It's just as easy as adding a plug in and pulling them through. But I think what that does is that if you actually are going to tweet and tweet events, what it's going to do is create that on the homepage. It's going to it's going to it's going to uh, back that up, and it also helps allow people, like I said, and let you know you're there and stuff. So yeah, verified accounts are great. Tweeting is great. Pull the Twitter feed into your into your homepage. I, I would say Twitter mostly because those should be short and sweet, as opposed to Facebook that they're kind of clunky. We don't want a big picture. The apparatus doesn't work right. I I truly think that a uh, uh, the Twitter feed is the, the best way to go, just because it allows you basically to microblog what's going on. You can put, you know, so now I can go to your homepage and I can see. But the other thing what I see is activity. You know, because now and now I know that this chamber is still here. It's still living, breathing, and it's doing its thing. You know, so that's those important things that need to be conveyed. So, all right, next question: Do we have everybody's so quiet today? Although I have little black boxes. So Beth, I, I have a question. Um, so we've been all of our. Zoom events that we've done over the course of the year, we've been recording and posting on uh, our posting on the YouTube channel. We have a YouTube channel. Scott's been really good about doing this for us. And we have also a link to that YouTube channel on our website. Does the location of that link make a difference in terms of being found, I guess, if that's the right question? Yeah, um, it, it does. Um, and I think that yeah, you need to, and what I would do is pull it into the web page. I wouldn't let, I wouldn't just link out to YouTube because what then happens is the traffic's leaving and going to over to YouTube and the next ad, it comes up, it may, I would actually embed it in. So if you see what I did on mine, I actually pull it through. Um, I actually think I have it set up that way on, on some of them. Well, I, I, what I did is I'm not allowing it to, I'm not a, a picking and choosing. I just literally threw them all on here. So everyone that I put up there and literally when I started, I think if you look back, um, I think we're, if I go to the last one, I mean, we're, we're so far back. I mean, you can just kind of see by the time you look, I mean, look how long long my hair is. But when I had this, I had this. And that was it. I had these three, and that was the only three I had. And everything else has been added since. Um, and it's become a well-trafficked part of the site. Google's picked up the fact that I have these things. Um, let's see if I do this. Sometimes they put it, yeah. See, they put those videos right into the search results. Right? Oh, yeah. They're them as the they're actually putting them as the podcast which is fine for me i'm i'm happy with that but when you do that it actually is putting and you got to come down into the ads as part of this problem but you see that they're embedding those right into the search results and all of them are listed here so when people look for my company they get the podcast they get the apple podcast link they get the youtube link so what that can be who or not Okay, so what I mean when I, is when I say this, you'll understand. True or not, it conveys that I am an expert and it makes me look a whole lot bigger than, and I don't want to say than I am because it implies that I'm small. I mean, we're a, we're a upper size small business, the low size, mid-sized business at this point, if I had to quantify where I think we are. 
okay? But just simply because I have all of this packed into when you search for us, and it has YouTube, Apple, um, it, it starts to make us look a whole lot bigger than where we are. So I think it's good for everybody to take that, pull it through the website, and make sure you, you set that up right. Scott, you need to do a little research on schema because that's what's causing this to happen is that I have schema wrapped around this that says, so they're embedding it right out in, into it, okay? Um, there's schema. generators for it, schema, yeah. And actually um, something like Rank Math has schema built into it. So you could do this theoretically and it just do it. But it's just a markup language that you put in the page and the markup language tells Google what that is. It's the same thing that would take your events and spit it out, would take your, um, what am I trying to say? uh event times you see it with well, movie listings is another thing you don't have any movies but that would be another that would be another one so i was very happy that we got to the point where the podcast now is being pulled through the main parts when you when you google the company um that and actually if i take this off how do you spell schema s-c-h-e-m-a okay. so if you come down you see how we have all of them everything here and all of our information about us is right here um and I, I think that's important to have that all that all blown into the page they're giving me a little bit different because this is my own page um they actually moved on so so anyway they're they're guessing where i am and based on what on what you call it should be but so, but yes, I would, I would for sure make sure that you have the, um, I'm in Katie, so it's pulling my Katie office. That's why it keeps doing this, but um, it does, it usually when I Google myself, the, the podcast is here in the reviews, so, um, or in the listings. Uh, so make sure that you that you do that though that you can do it. Um, Bobby, you could have a, a, a talk, you know, from your desk and do something once a week for thirty minutes and talk on a subject. Um, that would be something very easy for you to do that you could start to put together and you know and, and address your members once once a week, once a month if you wanted. I mean, I I know some of the old timers used to send a letter out to the membership once a month. Well, in your case, maybe you need to send out a podcast link once a month. That would be something that you could do to sit down. And here's the thing. This is what freaks everybody out, right? So I say, go make a tape, so I, a, a, a podcast recording. So I had um, one of my clients as a lawyer, and he had his, uh, one of his staff came in, and he's, the staff says, we said, um, too much. And we can't put a podcast out that we said, um, too much. Well, if the information is good and you say, um, and that's your natural speech pattern, the good news is this is not Hollywood and you can kind of go with that. I, you don't have to be the whole best speaker in the whole world. People are being forgiven with the fact that they understand that, you know, this doesn't have to be some big polished thing. I mean, you see, you know, people now they'll do their podcast. They're sitting at their desk in their house, uh, talking to their Zoom camera, and that's that's the best way to actually do it, as far as I'm concerned. Another thing that you can do, um, see, I just said um, is take your iPhone and you can do it with your iPhone. I recommend putting the video with it and then splitting the audio and video out of it. So if somebody wants to watch it as a movie, you know, as a video, let them do that. If they just want to listen to the audio take the audio out and make both do it because we have an interesting set of circumstances here, which is we have the people that are under the age of 35 that they would prefer a video. You have the people that are about 35 to 50 that would prefer an audio. And then you have the over 50 crowd that would rather have it in writing and that they could scan, identify whether it's something that they wanted to waste their time on but in either case, I've got my message across to whatever demographic I need. So I accommodate everybody because I see you laughing because I knew you know I'm right. That I can't, I hate, I hate videos that pop up and you wasted two minutes of my life and you said nothing. All right. That just bugs me to no end. Okay. 
But the, but the thing is, is that if I put the writing, you can scan it, you can watch it. If I do the podcast, you can put it on, you can take it with you, you can put it on in your car. If you don't like what it says, you can unsubscribe from the podcast and go on down the road. Um, the more avenues I get and give people content to consume the way they want to consume it rather than the way I am forcing them to consume it, the better off we are. And I think that's where we live is we have three separate sets of consumers of content. And I think you have to reach across to all three of them because you could even see it here. When I said video, Scott said, shook his head. When I said written, Bobby laughed and he got what I was saying, which is everybody over 50 likes written stuff. You agree? I think you both agree with that. So it's just a demographic thing. So give it to everybody across all three. And then what ends up happening is you end up with a whole much, a whole better set of the customer base because you're reaching them where they are. Um, and, and I will say that's one important marketing lesson that I think everybody needs to learn. You cannot, especially as time has gone on in this day and age, you cannot tell people the way you want it to be. You have to go reach to them where they are. You have to meet them where they are and then bring them back to you. And I think that's a, a lost art form because I, I run into a lot of customers that they want to just tell me what they want um, or, uh, or I see them dictating to their customers. I guess because I guess what I'm trying to say is the messaging on their websites tells prospective customers that this is our way. And if you don't like it, too bad. Well, that's not a good way to kick off a relationship with anybody because they're going to be pretty much like, if you only want it your way, then why do I want to get involved with you in the first place? So just you know, just go learn to meet people where they are. And this is the first lesson to do it is do it multi-platform across every medium so that whatever the age of that person is, you, you reach them the way that they are comfortable with as opposed to the way you want to force it on them. So that's that story. Next question. Everybody's quiet again. Beth, I have a couple questions. They're, oh, they're, not, they're not related. First one is, so you talked about uh, businesses closing and then, but their Google account shows that, you know, they haven't changed their Google account. <clears throat> Do you, does somebody eventually report that and they, because it, because, because um, like Yelp and then Google, well, eventually it'll say, you know, out of business or closed permanently or something like that. How sometimes they catch it. Sometimes people report it. They try to investigate it as much as possible. I think a lot of people are going to just, they, they, at this point, they don't know who's coming back and who's not. So they've kind of laid off the marketing businesses closed mm -hmm. because you may not even be coming to your office. You got to remember Google's kind of um, all over the world. So all over the world, there are still parts of the world that are not allowing people to come to an office. So they're, they've kind of suspended that whole aspect. Um, and like, if I wanted to mark a business closed, it may take a while for that to show up just because they don't, they're not. So I, yes, you have to tell them, uh, somebody can report it. You can see here on my screen, oh, it says edit my business because I am the business. Um, usually it says, do you have information? Are you the business owner? Do you want to submit something? And if you go there and the business is closed, um, then that would be that would that would show up there. So my other okay, my other question, this and I apologize if this sounds parochial or elementary, but I've noted I notice a lot of um, local mom and pop businesses, small businesses, don't have websites. You know, they will set up their Google account. Um, and, and I see this a lot with like restaurants and, or they try to use a Facebook page as their website. Um, can you talk about the importance of having and maintaining a website and not just a Google account or a Facebook account? I mean, does it, if, if my Google, if I'm just paying attention to my Google account and I'm updating it there. So when people say, uh, you know, XYZ uh, cafe is open. Um, 
Is that as far as people go, or do they actually do you do? You, is it is it make that much difference by supporting it with a website that's current? Um. Yeah. So interesting. This is a whole class topic. Just so you know. I'm I, I have sorry. To, <laughs> okay. I, I, no, don't be as sorry. I'm trying to think how to cut this down to a nutshell. Okay, so let's start with this. You never, ever, ever take your property, whether it be intellectual property or my coffee cup, and put it in the hands of somebody else and expect them to treat it with the same care and support that you will. Which sounds like why, what is the, why is that the answer to this question? When you go run your business off a Facebook page or even a Google My Business page, and you do not have a supporting website, when Facebook changes its ad policy, when Apple changes its software and blocks Facebook, when Google buys an entity and decides that they don't like the entity anymore, you now have taken everything that you've invested in that and lost it. And let me give you a real life example of something. So way back, maybe since 2006, there was a software called blogger.com and we were all using it for the blog because it was owned by Google and the output of it was in alignment with what Google needed. And Google purchased that software from the blogger.com people. And they allowed everybody to continue to use it for, I guess it was about two, three years after the point they purchased it. At the end of the purchase, at the end of the three years, they sent everybody an email and said, you have two months. We're going to shut down the way everybody's using this. And oh, by the way, anything you published past tense on this platform that remains now becomes the property of Google. When you put a picture up of the patrons in your restaurant on Facebook, Facebook becomes the owner of that video. When you uh, go to Google My Business and you put your posts and your pictures on there, Google then dictates what happens with that content. And when you use a company like Wix, Weebly, or Squarespace to build your website, and they decide tomorrow they're going to change their code base, and that goes for WordPress.com and about three others, um, but they change their code base and they blow up your website, you have no control. And when you're a small business owner, you need to never relinquish the control to somebody else. So that's my very long way of saying that you always should have a website. Um, I fully expect somebody like Har to jack their prices up because they've been telling real estate agents, ah, just take this down. We're going to give you tools. Eventually, at some point, they're going to come back and jack that price way up because they've had everybody shut their website down. We're all now over there. And then all of a sudden the price is going to go through the roof. And then it's going to be a scramble to try to go back to where you were, except that Google's not going to be happy with it. And any gains that you would have had are probably going to be gone. So you never want to relinquish that right. You never want to give that away. And I wish that business owners understood that from the minute they opened their doors, that the only thing that you actually can do is to make sure you have your own domain. You're using wordpress.org, O-R-G, not com. And that you are the owner of your files and you are the arbiter of what goes on your site. And that there's no terms of service other than says, I won't steal, I won't distribute kitty porn, and I won't make terror threats. And past that, what I do is my business. And when you have to start agreeing that you won't do this and you won't do this, and won't, that's a that's a flashing light for you to run. Um, 
places that make you take your domain and put your files on something like uh, Squarespace, for example. It may be seo411.squarespace.com. That's where my files live. Well, the second that happens, I basically moved my house into somebody else's house. And that's the way people need to, to think about that. And usually when I do these type, this kind of a talk, this goes on for a really long time and I can go on for this about two hours and 30 minutes. On the front of ACTWD, there's a whole discussion about why you don't want to use third party applications to run your website. You need to own it and it needs to be yours and you need to never put yourself in a position that somebody can come and take that away from you. Um, and, and the thing is like Facebook, it's interesting because Facebook didn't actually take a, what caused the problem, Apple did, but they blocked the way the ads work and the way those pages interact. So in doing that, Facebook's kind of hurt the people that are using Facebook instead of having their own web presences are kind of hurt. And Etsy, um, another one would be, they're all kind of the same. If you're going to put marketing dollars and put um, intellectual property up and you don't control the way it interacts, you've got a problem. Now, do as I say, not as I do. I take a lot of amateur photography. I may go put them all up on Smug Mug, but I'm not looking to build a business of selling photography. If I was, I'd take them all down and hang them, handle them myself. As long as I'm just going to go stick them up there, I'm going to just go throw them out on Smug Mug and leave it. So that there is a, what is the difference behind the back end of it? But, but the reality is, as a business owner, you never put your well-being in somebody else's hands because they will never care for it as well as you do. And that's kind of like your own child. It's sort of the same thing you would say about somebody's kid. So that, that's like a profound set, set of statements that I think I just made. I just kind of sound like I'm doing the, the fortune cookie portion of the afternoon. Um, but it's one of those really big messages that I always try to get across the small business owners because I want them autonomous of anybody and everybody that I literally, if that hosting company goes away, I can pick up my little suitcase and I can go to the next provider. And if I hate that provider, I can pick up my suitcase and go to the next provider. When you don't set yourself up to do that and you're beholden to somebody else and you can't pick your luggage up and leave, you have a problem. And that's, that's where we're at. So that was probably not the answer you were expecting, um, but that is the actual answer. Was that, what were you thinking was gonna be the answer? Uh, no, no, that was perfect. <laughs> that was perfect. That is exactly the answer. That, yeah, that, <laughs> no, well, I mean, it was, a, it was a little bit of a leading question, but it was also my own curiosity is, you know, I, I just, I bump into that a lot when I'm searching for, like I said, a place to eat or a place to, you know, get a pair of shoes or eyeglasses. I'm like they have no website, you know, and well, but I found them on Google, um, but there's no website. I can't go and and I, 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 I apologize if I'm boring everybody else, but you know, I, I don't know if everybody else does this, but before I get in my car anymore and go get go pick up something or go buy something, I'm spending time on the internet looking to see. I'm shopping on the internet before I go and physically buy it. Well, and, there's a lot of that. I've had people come down and say that they've done it as far down as a $3 pencil that they didn't want it, that they are researched the heck out of it before they could go buy it anywhere. So. <laughs> yeah. so I don't just pick up and head off to Target and hope to find it. I'm, I'm, you know, and if they don't have an inventory, I mean, I mean, now again, we're talking about large businesses. So we got to be, we got to keep in context that we're trying to help our small business members, but you know, the more you can put on the internet about your business and what you offer and what's current, the more successful you're going to be. And I'm a 50 something, you know, is that true? Well, now, yeah. What I will tell you is that <laughs> this is kind of funny. The millennials, they're very accepting of all of this. So sometimes they go crazy and they go research the heck out of things. And other times they're like, oh, it must be on the internet. It must be okay. So there's just like this split somewhere. There's like a split personality that they, I've had them say, oh, I've re I'll research a, a, a swing for my kid for four hours trying to figure out what's the best 
but then on the next breath, they go buy a pencil for their iPad, not made by Apple, and they scratch the whole screen. And you're like, well, didn't you look over, read the reviews? It says it's right. Oh, no, I didn't think to go do that. So it's, it's generational, too. I think the older 50 crowd was trained to trust but verify. I don't know that we pass that to the younger generations as well. So I don't know. That might be a Scott question. Do you trust but verify, or do you just trust it because it's there? It's what you said. It just depends. There you go. See, we trust but verify everything. I give Scott a hard time. He's a sucker for fake news. There you go. <laughs> there you go. They fall for it every time. <laughs> so. All right. 